Good morning. It's our last day here in the L.A. studios for now. And it's Casual Wednesday. Run it back. Starts now. Run it up to run it back. Yeah. Run it up to run it back. Run it up. Run it back. Run it up. Good morning and welcome to Run It Back. Sham Sharania, Chandler Parsons, Eddie Gonzalez. We, um, full sweats today. Just killing the game. Just killing the game. We're dressing like we're still at home and I'm kind of proud of us for not swaying off off our brands (laughs) at all. But look, we got to get right to it because there was some basketball that was played last night. I mean, you could call it basketball. It was a little bit odd. But Kings just went an absolute blowout of the Nets. 153 points. Mm. Does this say more about the Kings? And by the way, beam team back in effect. Does it say more about them or the Nets? Like, what do I do with this? I mean, I feel like it's more about the Kings. We talk about the Nets so much, and it's, yes. it's exhausting. The Kings, to me, this is this was their chance. They're finally on national TV. Oh, that's true. Um, and they got their chance to absolutely punk and embarrass the Nets last night. It really just showed how deep they are. This guy, Sabonis, can do it all. He's an absolute monster. He's getting the rebound. He's going coast to coast. Fox is creating. They got guys like Trey Lyles, Terrence Davis. Oh had a hell of a game. I'm sitting here, I couldn't help but sit here and watch this game last night thinking that after Kevin Durant, the next six out of seven best players on the floor were all on the Kings. That's crazy to say out loud. It's crazy, but it's true, and and I'm happy for them. Like, we always talk about they had the longest drought, they're thirsty to get in the playoffs, and last night kind of showed their potential of how good they can be when they're clicking. It was kind of fun to see the Kings fan base just partying the way they were but Eddie I know I'm not happy for the I Kings. Know. <laughs> <laughs> no um yeah I think it does say more about the Kings I we talked about the Nets all week we talked about them every week don't worry we're, we're gonna get to them again we're gonna get to yeah, them. But that's fine. this is a little bit of what we've known of the Nets they're, they're <laughs> talent depleted they have issues but the Kings what they built in the offseason what they built in the last few years Shams talked about it yesterday it's starting to show their team makes sense they have a quick point guard who can run their offense they have the modest Sabonis who can be an offensive hub who can get every rebound on the floor they had they've spread out with shooters as well they've drafted Keegan Murray who look he didn't have the greatest game yesterday but you see the talent you see his ability uh it, it's a good team finally now, how that plays out throughout the season, sure. if they Sacramento it up, we don't know. But it's a team that actually makes sense and actually has talent, and they have not had that in years. In no, that, that used to be such, people don't know this. Kids don't. This that was a fun place to go to games two decades Arco ago. Arena. Arco like, Arena. It was yeah. the most Rock. fun, was, but, and it's just been a minute. But we do need to talk about the Nets. We are contractually obligated to talk about the Nets, apparently. Um, <laughs> and specifically today. They make it that way, though. I mean, it feels like it. Uh, ben Simmons, where are we? What's what's the latest? So Ben Simmons actually returned yesterday uh, after missing Sunday's game. Uh, he got scratched with a knee. But, he, you know, he played pretty solid. I thought there, it was a step forward for him. The first time he scored double-digit points, Michelle, since June 2021 so he has that going and I I think if you're able to take any type of solace it's that but over the last several weeks there's been a buildup of frustration and concern around the organization when you talk about from players coaching staff and even organizationally Uh on on him his availability his level of play um, and even his passion and, and how much he has of that his intensity of that to get on the floor and compete at a high level he has the back surgery from May. Sure. He did get his knee drained about a week, uh, about two weeks ago. Uh, so listen, there are some physical attributes, and we saw he had a dunk last night. Um, he has a ways to go physically as as well, but I think there's definitely some stuff that he can control that nets what, whether it's organizationally, teammates are all showing, and that's something that has stood out that will be an issue for the Nets moving forward. And he did address all. I mean, he did talk about this stuff yesterday about how he he hears it and he. Thinks that maybe he should get a little more slack and get, but he also understands. I don't, I don't know what to do with Ben Simmons. Sometimes I feel like Ben Simmons loves the lifestyle the NBA provides him, but doesn't love to do the stuff you have to do to be great at it. And maybe I'm crazy for thinking that it just looks that way to my civilian eyes. Is that possible? It feels like it. It really does. And the guy had a year off, which I did give him slack early on. Now we're getting now we're into the season now, yeah. and this guy is just not figuring it out. He's not getting better. He, he's got a real mental block where he's scared to fail. And I think half of this, the times he's settling, it's because he doesn't want to get fouled. He doesn't want to get to the free throw line. He's scared shitless. Sorry to, <laughs> to get to the, the free, to, to get to the free throw line. And it's what happened to the 610, 240, coast to coast, Magic Johnson s diamond people, like the swag, the arrogance. 
I, I hope he can find that, but it's 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 mind boggling and it's it's kind of sad to watch where he is. Like last night, I'm watching the game and Van Gundy's gassing how he's playing. This is a max multi all star, and and mm -hmm. we're gassing like him doing what he double did last digits night. for the first time since right. That's just to me. Like he's a scrub. That that's, that's, ooh, he got double digits. If this isn't rock bottom, I don't know what is. Their team's losing. The team needs help. He's not figuring it out. The team wants him to succeed. Uh, to succeed they too, need though. him. Because you know, he might be the last the, man standing, right? Like when it's all said and done. The, yeah, I mean like you're right. I mean Kevin Durant. You know, we'll, we'll see what happens with his future. Kyrie Irving. He's in the last year of his deal. Ben Simmons has two years and almost eighty million dollars on his contract after this season. I, I want to take as much sauce as I can in last night's game. Hopefully that's a step forward for him uh, and, and, and that team. But he, th last night, if that's a stepping stone, right. that's, that's And tough. he's never been like this ISO guy, go get a bucket, one dribble, pull up, step back. He's never been that. But he's he's been more. He, now he just gets the ball, he gets rid of it as soon as he can, or he just dribbles into a, a dribble handoff and, <laughs> and goes to the dunker and hopefully he gets an easy layup and doesn't get fouled. Like that is... Uh, I, it's I, just, gotta be frustrating. I don't understand what happened, and I don't know if it's mental or physical, but I am I'm confused. Yo, Sean, if, if, if you brought me a dribble handoff seven times a game, and then because you're stinking it up, it's a trap every time I get the ball, I'd be a little frustrated with you, too. Yeah. I understand. 100% believe the report. Like, they have to be frustrated. Fans are frustrated. They look frustrated on the court, and then he misses games, and then it, it, and they're dealing with all of that. He out at the players only meeting or whatever it was. He spoke about it again yesterday. Jay, have you ever had a teammate speak about a players only meeting to the media? No, there's a reason why it's, <laughs> there's a reason why it's players the only. The only word. And there's just certain things. Yeah, there's, certain, <laughs> there's certain things you do not do, man. And and again, with the way he's playing, he's got no wiggle room or room for air on the other stuff, on no, the off the court none. stuff. So if he's not working hard, if he's not the first one at the gym, if he's going out, if he's coming in hungover, like if he's doing anything like that, he's just digging his grave deeper. What is his vibe on the, you you see them more than anyone. Like it I mean, is like he the, friends with other guys on the team? Do they hate or is he sort of He's isolated? like the coolest guy ever. He okay. Which is like kind of crazy because wow. you, you know, look, I don't want to say he's not working hard, he's not focusing on whatever. But when you see a guy who who's kind of carrying himself like he is the best player in the world, you kind of want to see him be the best player in the world or close to it. I feel for him a little bit because I do think it is a mix of everything. I do think there's a bit of a mental block, like mm -hmm. Chandler said. I also think he's not healthy and not back to his peak athleticism. You can see that. The dunk you mentioned, he had a dunk in the first preseason game against the Sixers, and it was like, yo, it was exciting. He got a dunk on the fast break. But he barely got up, and he barely got it in. He's missed a few dunks. He's missed a few. Uh, he's airballed a layup in the game. So it's like there is a little bit of all of this there. But if you're the team, you're going, hey, we're paying you $35 million. Mm -hmm. You know, we're paying Kyrie Irving $37 million. We're paying Joe Harris $18 million. It doesn't look like himself. Yeah, that's we, We're heavily invested in you overcoming this. And, you know, for me, biased as I am, I watch Kevin recover from an Achilles and come back and be better. Maybe. Exactly. And so I have almost no sympathy for like, yo, you were hurt and you've had ample time to recover and you should have recovered, you know? The, the thing that's also interesting, he's gone from literally their starting point guard, the guy that's running the offense, playmaking, d distributing, pushing the pace, to the backup five in I mean, 15 games. I mean, that type of role change, like... I'm sure it's tough on him. I, I wonder how he took coming off the bench, but there's there's a lot there in terms of role and expectation that they had going into the season that clearly have, have, have but, yet but, to but be like I'm not. I'm gonna be critical of that too because in putting him in that role, they've put him in the best position he can thrive okay. in. Yeah. You're playing against backups. You're you're gonna have the ball in your hand. We're gonna surround you with shooters. They've had seen the matchup data with Nick Claxton. It's the worst pairing in the league, and it's like all season long. From the very beginning, they've built this team in a way to compensate maximize for him ben. and to maximize Ben instead of maximizing Kevin Durant, who may be the best player in the world. Because they're just assuming what Kevin knows what he's doing. We, we don't even worry about right. Kevin. He's a luxury. Right. Yeah. He's not our centerpiece, and they've suffered for it. And now he's upset because they're still doing it, but just not in a way he likes. I, I don't buy that. Like you're playing in this way, so this is what we're going to do that we think is best for you. Because at the end of the day, that's what it is. We have to get the most out of him we can. So like. We do it from 12 minutes off the bench against backup bigs. And so, yeah, I get, like, the ego of it. But, yo, this is for you. Yeah, that's that's the, right, that's the biggest problem for a guy like him, though. When you take him out of that role and that all-star stardom level to put him off the bench, 
that's that's almost more damaging to a guy like him than just letting him rock and letting him feel like a starter and a critical part of the team. Now him, I think this mentally hurts him and puts him even in a darker place. Now they don't believe in me. Now I'm not starting. Oh my now, goodness. And, at some point, you just have to do your job. 11 I mean, points is a wants celebration? To I, that's, I, I want to ask you, Chandler, and I, I do want to get to Kevin Durant in a minute, but um, look, a lot of the individual sports guys, they have very specific sports psychologists. Like, we should all have therapists on our own. Like, that's a thing, right? But a sports psychologist, when they have the yips or they just think they're in their own way, whatever. Are we doing that if we're Ben Simmons? Like, yeah. just for that alone? Well, also... Every team pretty much has somebody, some sort of resource, some outlet you can go and talk to, and it's completely confidential, and, and you could do that. Maybe not completely I was going to say, <laughs> like, kind of. <laughs> but this, that, that's only a part of it. This, this psychiatrist, this person is not out there on the court with him. Right. This person's not playing in front of 20,000 people. So you can talk, you can do all the things you want, you can air out, you can get things off your chest. But at the end of the day, he's scared of his physical skill set. He's scared to shoot the basketball. He's scared to go to the free throw line. And and if that's if this isn't rock bottom, I don't know I don't know what else to do with him. You start him, you bring him off the bench, you, he doesn't play, he plays, he's on a minute restriction. They're, the Nets got it soon is gonna be like Dude, too much. What else can yeah. we do for you? It's too much. Yeah. It's, it's not new either. This was going on in Philadelphia that him shooting threes became a thing. Like he was refusing to shoot threes. And to the point where when he did, his ground was giving him standing ovations for That's it. That's not good. Like he's the equipment manager on senior night. Like it's like a walk-on <laughs> getting in the yo, game and they're rallying it's like, for him. Yo, this is not it, – it's crazy because if you go look at his Mount Verde film, like he's shooting pull-up threes. He's doing all this insane stuff. So it's like – we had something that happened. What, 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 something happened. It broke. And it it's slowly Space built. Jam. The aliens came. They took his. That's talent, what it is. We, that's how it feels. That's, that's how it feels. Wrong. That's how it looks. <laughs> that's how it looks. Been abducted from the inside. By the way, this start. I'm going to ask this every show for the rest of our lives. Should we? Can we? Will we trade Kevin Durant? They should. Yeah. I mean. He would. He would I love that. I can't have I'm him sure. rotting out there forever as a fan. But he's too can't, good. Can't. He's too good to trade. They, 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 he's too good. It's, it's about maximizing the value, right? Yeah. And like they had in the summertime, uh, you know, a few offers, but highlighted the biggest offer was Jalen Brown, Derek White, and a first round pick. I, I think if they had negotiated, you could have gotten more than just that. That was hmm. only one of the initial offers that the Celtics had made. So. Is, there, is it possible to go back to that? Well, I'm not sure. The Celtics are probably playing too well. They have too much invested at this point in the season in Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum. Uh, so I, 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 it's, it's tough for me to see a package that makes sense. And right now the Nets do seem like they're all in on this season, and that How? makes it tough. Like what's – I don't – is this season – Turnaroundable, like it feels. I mean, Kyrie coming early. back and being a top five player in the NBA is the only way they That's even a have lot a of chance. Ifs. And I still don't think they're gonna. The 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 days of putting a star or two stars <coughs> around ten non NBA players, it doesn't work. Teams are too talented. The league is too talented. Teams that are deep and have the the, the depth and the size and the that is the key to success. Down, you see the teams that do that. It's not the one two guys again surrounded by the the two way players. It's just not. That's not a recipe for success anymore. And that's what the Nets are doing. That's what the Lakers are doing. And it's it's, not it's like old fashioned feeling. Yeah. It's too, defenses are too good. The analytics, the film, the everything everything is now. They know how to kind of rattle Kevin Durant. He's still going to get his thirty. Still going to get his forty. And they're going to make these other guys beat them. And I mean, it's, they can't. The team they played last night, Sacramento. Exactly. That's not, there's not superstars. Yeah. And then a couple like. That's Shout, out Shout out Sacramento. Shout out Sacramento. Good for them. <laughs> Eddie's Kings. By the way, Jalen Brown, not the biggest Joe Sy fan, as we know now. Oh, yeah. I forgot so about that like, Yo, is that even yeah, a thing? So much that, that's the issue with trading Kevin. That's the issue they had this summer. That's all the stuff they stared in the face. If we break this down right now, the best way to get assets is to trade Kevin away. That's why they wanted astronomical amount of picks. That's why they... Watched the Rudy hmm. Gobert trade and said, oh, we can top that. But not only did they want picks, they wanted stars, too. They wanted, like, Memphis, <clears throat> Phoenix. Those those teams offered four or five first-round picks. Minnesota put four or five first-round picks on the table for Kevin Durant before they got Rudy Gobert. So there were offers made. There were a bunch Man. of picks presented. But they wanted what anyone would probably want for Kevin Durant, which is they wanted the stars All and the it. picks. <laughs> right. this, I feel like is, truth serum. I wonder if they regret it. This is their opportunity to break it down. Because you let Kyrie leave for nothing if you keep him till the summer. This is your chance. You're probably looking at a new coach this summer. Who knows about the GM? This is your opportunity to collect all the assets you can, cash out, and build your next regime. Start over. Are they going to do it? Kevin's too good. Kevin is too good. Kevin what should stop being good for two months. But look, what if happens I'm, if he sits out? 
If I'm New Orleans, what I'm happens if he doesn't play? He loves basketball too much. I, that's the thing. I, he's yeah. not, I don't he's think he's not. wired that way, right? He won't. Yeah. He's, there, there's just... It, he just loves basketball. It is what it is. The league knows it. It's fine. Everybody said it all summer. For the most part, he's looking like he's having fun. It's just unfortunate the team. He's enjoying the grind. Which also, from the outside looking in, too, this guy, Kevin Durant, is such a hooper and loves it. That's probably even more why mm. he's pissed off mm -hmm. at Ben Simmons, who doesn't seem like he loves it. And right. it's two, it's opposite ends of the spectrum there with those two guys. Well, you could make the argument with Kyrie, too. Exactly. Like he could say, he could look at Kyrie and be like, you don't love it like I love it. Like, there's always something with you. You're not available. So. It's, it's a lot going on there. And look, he's, he's asked out before. It's not a report. Leave me alone. Like, <laughs> but he's asked out before. Shams has told the world. But, you know, it push may come to shove again. And th this is the time, truth be told. This is the time. This is the only time you can get something for Kyrie. You're not getting anything for Ben. Or if you do, it's going to be very low returns on what you gave up to get him. It's they have to explore. You have to. The worse this season gets, you have the more you have to explore. You men are so dramatic. Truly, <laughs> there's always something with you guys. I don't know how you make it through the day. Um, another game. Luca played his favorite team in the league. The Los Angeles Clippers had 35. Had a big three pointer at the end. This is a team that he seems to love playing against because he, he torches them every time. 32 points every single time minimum. Um, how do you explain? like a player that has a, an opponent that he just thrives against? And did you have one when you played? Uh, not like this guy does, no. This this is weird to me too because the Clippers are such a, a, a tough matchup for him. They have five, six guys that can switch. They got smaller guys that can get under him. They got big guys that can move their feet and stay in front of him. <sighs> they got wings that can switch and, and cr create just kind of havoc for him. And it doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't bother him. And it, that's what's so special about Luca is when you put a smaller guy on him, when you put a stronger guy, a faster guy, it never speeds him up. He plays with this, his pace, he holds you off, he's a lot bigger when you see him in real life, and, and there's nothing he, can, he can't he can do. And But I, I see hold, there's a lot of holes in the Mavs team too. They had one guy last night on the bench score, and it was Christian Wood. <laughs> one guy. Yes. And they had guys like Reggie Bullock, Dorian Finney-Smith, Gator hit seven threes last night. Those are the guys that are gonna have to step up, but one guy on your bench scoring, that. Yeah, if Kawhi's out there, that's not that's not how that plays yeah. out, right? Like yeah, that's you've got to figure something else out. Yeah. Shout out, shout out, Luca for shushing the home team. That like, was, that was, was crazy. Like, all right, bro. Like <laughs> <laughs> you got your locked in. I get it, but yeah, look, he clearly takes these matchups personal. He's played them in the playoffs. He's been down, came back against them, old three-one comeback. Um, yeah, I mean, and some sometimes. It's it's kind of like in the NFL, quarterbacks don't play defenses; they play defensive coordinators. Like Luca's mostly playing Ty Lue out there, and he knows <laughs> how they're coming at him, and he knows what to do, and yeah, he's taking it personally. And, and on the flip side, I think the Clippers they 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 oh, they I, need Kawhi Leonard I, to. Be I wonder there. how much fatigue that organization and 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 the roster you could just tell because going into the year, you saw Paul George come out with comments that you yep. know. Kawhi's the number one. I'm cool being the number two. It's like every the whole season was kind of geared toward <laughs> was like kiss of death when he said that. the return of Kawhi, right. and and obviously a lot of optimism about trying to win a championship this year and just him not being in the lineup. I wonder how much fatigue has set in because um, this is a team that wanted him to be there and and wants him there full time. And so when he's not, it's like, oh, this is deja vu. We're doing this all over yeah. again. And for Paul George, he's back in, in that number one seat. And um, I think he had 10 turnovers yeah. last night. So you, you could tell defenses are continuing to, to gear toward him, and he needs Kawhi back. Because we have no idea. Like, I know Kawhi went on this trip, right? So that's a, that's a sign. He played that's five a, on five recently, which is usually a, a step. You know, Chandler that's knows. That's the last step. It's Once so you get mysterious, five on five, though. You do a couple of five on fives, and you and you get back on the floor. But they don't. I mean, they're very good at, at sort of hiding their cars. Like we have no idea. I don't know when he's coming back. I mean, I'm fatigued by wondering when Kawhi is going to be out there, and I have no investment in this whatsoever. But it's. Like, as a team, again, your best player, you don't know when you have him. And you, and the thing is, and I don't want to be cynical, but I am, when he does come back, how long does he stay for? Because now we're kind of used to Kawhi not playing more than he plays, which yeah. I hate to say. It's a roller coaster. And, again, guys' roles change based on whether he's in the lineup and, or he's not. And so it's tough when a guy of that key of the offense and defense is in and out. It's tough to adapt and it's tough to learn on the fly, but I mean, it's it's they just got to have the next man up mentality. And like Batum last night, he played very very well. They actually got a lot out of their bench with John Wall and Batum and guys like that. But it's for them to take that next step and be a contender, they need Kawhi to be at that All Star level, and it's tough to see him there when he's not on the floor. Maybe someday. Holidays are coming up. 
a couple of these teams need to be sending presents to the Nets because they're <laughs> flying under the radar with all of the things going on. Yeah. Yeah. The Nets are just so dramatic. Like yeah, it's, 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 I know, I agree. <laughs> nice nice much. gift to Joe Sy. Send him something. He needs oh, I it. think he can afford pretty much anything <laughs> he needs to buy for himself. Uh, one of the games, I think to me, these are the two of the more fun teams to watch, Memphis and uh, New Orleans. New Orleans beating them. No Zion. C.J. McCollum seemed to sort of spring out of his his slump that he was in. He had 30 points. Also had a moment where he got angry, which was very odd to see him do that. But as far as C.J. and his role to this Pelican squad, how important <clears throat> is he? Well, he's the nominal point guard for them. You know, for a team that doesn't have great point guards, he's going to be their playmaker along with Brandon Ingram. Uh, he also has a ton of playoff experience, which that team lacks. And so he's, you know, he's huge for them. And what he can do off the bounce, he's got such a pretty game, and he's able to ability to shoot off the bounce. It, it, they're going to need that late game. As teams zero in on BI, as teams force Zion to go right, force him to shoot jumpers. They need that. He's done it. He's he's hit a game winner in Game Seven on the yeah. road. Like this is a guy you can trust late in a playoff game. And especially a game like this when Zion is out. Right. C J is the guy. Him and B I. They're gonna have to share. They're gonna have to get the the majority of the points. And he's been struggling lately. And it was great to see him kind of have that coming out coming out game and have the bounce back game because you know when they're healthy. I mean, listen. I kind of feel like they've kind of been a little disappointing this year. But when they're healthy, this is a team that I don't want to see. Larry Nance was great last night. I, Alvarado is such a pest. I, oh, I love really their is. I love their young guys. Uh, this is a very very interesting team, and and CJ is a huge part to their success. On the other side, John Morant, 36 points. Um, Bane's out, so I, I know people have started talking about is John. I mean, he's obviously amazing, but is he enough to carry a team when necessary? Uh, I, yeah, I think for sure. I think he's he's the, about as dynamic as you can get, um, and, and I think. Desmond Bain is the perfect fit for him. Mm -hmm. We're spacing the floor, shooting the ball. They're getting, they got Jaron Jackson back last night, which is going to help. Um, but yeah, Ja can do it all. He, he needs to get his teammates involved a little bit more, but he is must-see TV. He is so explosive. He there's, Watching some of the highlights that he did last night were absolutely video game. Um, and, and, Dylan, and that was insane. <laughs> like that, that, that anticipation and just... And, and it's then the finish, nuts. too. Yeah, you know, he's... He's like a mix of everything. Like, D I would Rose, pay to watch him. Russ, this, spin AI. Like, this behind the back. I, it's, I can't believe Larry Nance continued to run and keep all his ligaments intact <laughs> with this move right here. Jaw's amazing. I mean, what we're saying, him carrying, that's the next step in his. Because <laughs> usually guys go up and under the other Yeah, like the, the famous MJ layup. This man, he dunked it in traffic, left foot, left hand. Like, that is so <laughs> hard. I'm 6'10", and I couldn't do that. <laughs> this is, that is so hard to do. You see how quick they try to take it out and get on the, on, get on the right, run right, after right. that? Like, but, yeah, I mean, he's he's talented enough to carry a team. I mean, they're 9-6. and six. They're doing fine. I, I was a little shocked at Shams yesterday. Uh, it sounds like Bane is going to be out for uh, a yeah, month. What, yeah, what yeah. Two, two to three weeks, grade two sprain of the right big toe. The, the, those big toe injuries are what tough. That? I mean, it sounds those, so funny, though. Those big toe injuries, guys can miss weeks and weeks, sometimes months if it is fractures. Uh, so thankfully, he doesn't have a fractured right big toe. But, uh, yeah, his big toe is, is messed up. Right and this is going to be huge for Dylan Brooks. This is now his opportunity. Desmond Bane's yeah. out. He's got to find a way to carry the help carry the load with Jaw, with Jaron. Uh, and he, he's been a little inconsistent this year. He's all over the place. He's got to find a way to be more efficient, take better shots, and kind of be that guy to, to hold the fort down while Bane's out. That is one of the sillier professional sports injuries, right? Toe. A big toe. It's you just sound funny soft it when you say funny. my toe. But that, I mean, I think about it. It's, it's, what you, you, every, it's everything. It's everything. Yeah. It's everything. Yeah. You guys don't wear heels, though. I'm telling you. We, this is a show where I just rip men. Once you wear heels, right? you become really... Yeah, you can do anything after that. Just like that. Strengthen your toes. Michelle has one slippers in here every day. Oh, yeah, she's I'm talking not, heels. I'm, I'm not wearing heels. All right. uh, Utah, by the way, this is it. I told you guys they're going to start the season hot. Then they're going to slowly start their process so that it looks like they were trying the Compromise entire time. Compromise tanking, that's yes. what you think? There Third you straight game they've lost. So, uh, you know, they were obviously at the top. We were talking about them a lot. But now I ask you, what's more likely, that they make their way into the playoffs or that we... See them as a lottery team. They, they dropped the ten and six. They're not doing that. That bad. dude. That's how it starts, though. Yeah, yeah it's, 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 <laughs> like the, it's the ten wins is is going to hurt. I mean, you look historically, the bottom four or five teams, they only have twenty wins. So like, they kind of if they continue this losing streak, they kind of blew their wad early there, and, and, <laughs> and it's kind of they're gonna look back and kind of be frustrated that they got off to such like, a hot oops. start. 
And this is what we were talking about. Like they're they're they thought they were gonna lose, but then they got guys like Lori Markinen that are <laughs> balling. They got Kelly Olenek. These guys, they took that personal and they got off to a hot start. But can they sustain it? Are they gonna be a top four seed? No chance. So then you must you must take it seriously. You gotta go the other way. You, you don't wanna to, be right? caught in the middle, yeah. Winning those ten November games is just <laughs> Too early. They're, gonna, they're gonna finish with 19 wins <laughs> and they're gonna get the ninth pick. We're about to Just find out. Yeah. Well, obviously, we're yeah. about to find out. I, I, I don't think that this is the end for the Jazz. I, I personally think that they're gonna be able to take a step and, and I, I think they'll turn it around. Because I, I think they are invested in trying to compete after this team got off to this, what, 10 and 3 start? Yeah. But we're going to see. We're, we're going to find out soon with Will Hardy and his group. You know what I like about doing the show in studio, guys? We get to see how positive Shams is. Right. I'm he a has very just this aura person. of optimism. I am. I appreciate I it. Devil on. Yeah, it tempers, like, <laughs> yeah. over here. Yeah. <laughs> I, I watch Shams walk around Staples, and everybody's acting like he's the Grim Reaper. It's, you know. Oh. oh well, no. that's different. I don't think so. <laughs> he's, that he's, was, he's, he's in enemy territory. Yeah, yeah, he really is. Like, that's a, that's a different animal altogether. <laughs> Taking a quick break. Well, when we come back, a monster dunk from an OG. Butler does it again, and a pass that you're probably going to want to see. That's all when Run It Back returns. Run it up, run it back, yeah, yeah. Run it up, run it back, run it up, run it back, run it up, run it back. Moran, oh, takes off and changes and puts it down with the offhand. What a play by Moran in mid-flight. And now Moran's got 30. Look at this. Switches in, goes out the right and finishes with the left. That is amazing. Oh, that is absolutely <laughs> spectacular. I mean, he's, yes, he's must-see. I would pay. You know, there's a lot of guys you're like, I'm not paying to see that. Paying to see that. If I did that in a game, I'd throw the ball in the crowd. Like on an eight-foot run. Run. Yeah. <laughs> just, on an eight-foot run. The game's <laughs> over. I'm out. I've I'm done. done it. Going to the locker room. I can't room. do I'm that. Just, I'm just running in the locker room. Yeah, right. I'm, I'm just, game over. Nothing else matters. Look what I did. <laughs> he's a one-man <laughs> entertainment show. And then the, the pre-game videos about, with his dad just dapping it up to everybody in the right. read. Like, they just run that. I I, I don't know. I love it. Um, that's obviously a, a little segui into, <laughs> that man has a family. We have a lot more. I, this is my favorite. Well, it's one of my favorites. Kenyon Martin Jr. Uh, he's had a few, like, monster dunks yeah, this year. Yeah, like, he's bouncy. The left-hand banger also just looks better than, than the right. Yeah, really what? Does. Is it just because we're... I don't, you just don't see it all. I know. Like the, Especially from a righty. Yeah, exactly. I was going to say, it's because our coffee mugs are lefties, and it throws me yeah, off. Yeah, so maybe that's, that's what it is. <laughs> like, that's it a nice body, odd. too. That's a nice... And that's on a legit Zubach. center. Oh, yeah, big yeah. fella. A footer. A footer. Yeah, that yeah, looks that's good. Looks that's like a Looks like his pop. He's actually like way shorter than you think he is too. So he does look it's small. It's really impressive yeah. that he does this. 11 points a game this year for, for Kmart. Ooh, just like Ben Simmons. <laughs> <laughs> not a game. <laughs> not a game. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy Butler. Okay, blocks. I, I'm here for the blocks. Let me see if I love it. Oh. Yeah. Oh, wow. Jimmy got off to a really slow start this year, but he's turned. He's he's picked it up. Yeah, yeah. This is this is clutch. This is effort. This is. By the way, to do this on one of the best ISO scores yeah. too, who wow. gets his shot whenever and wherever he wants. This this is big time. It's not like a kind of block or sort of got a piece of it. It's just a full on hit a wall. This is game on the line. Me against yeah. you. You're not even gonna get this That's shot off. That's awesome. Like we're winning this game. Book, That's a great one. Book, you gotta push him next time. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just a little elbow. Just get him out the way. Dante DiVincenzo. Excuse me. Rude. I'd like to think this is kind of accidental. Yeah, like the, I, I momentum of, <laughs> the momentum of the right hand coming Passionate, around. Passionate, it looks like. Listen, He's trying to block it. He's trying to, he, oh, blo he did block it with the left hand. It was the right hand that hit him in the head. He clearly... I know Dante a little bit. I don't I don't think this he... No, was, well, Jay Rich didn't, wasn't even mad. Like, he yeah, got yeah, up and was like, all right, well, cool, cool. So that I doesn't like look like it hurt that bad. Either. And he's like, got no priors. Weird. He's got no priors. This he's is the first. No this is the first. Of, first offense. <laughs> he didn't. Okay, meet. but now he has a prior. Now if he does this again, so now, now he's Grayson Allen. Yeah. Grayson Allen. yeah. We yeah. don't mention that name yeah. in my presence, Chandler. What did I say on day one? <laughs> Giannis. Yeah, Giannis to Bobby oh Portis. Is this That's like nice. a real no look? Like, let's see. He took a peek. Ooh. I mean, That's it's, pretty filthy. It's That's pretty. Fun. That's pretty yeah. nice. That's pretty. Look, I've been a Giannis hater in my day. That's pretty. How that's can you pretty be a, You though. might be the only person in the world I've heard. Say I, that. I like the James Harden take, like yo. But at some point, I just appreciate the production. Like he just, he just gets it. I feel like that he's pass had a, a lot of room for. He's just a monster. He's an animal. Yeah, it's like also, the minute you think, oh, he's not that good of a passer. He does some stuff. He does some things like this. Where I'm like, don't, don't do it. Yeah, don't he, do he it. can do everything. I, call I would myself, like to I call say myself there. they should have intercepted that. I feel like there was room for an interception, and they didn't even. 
I don't know what they were Luka thinking. Luka did one of these early against the Nets, but it was like kind of off. This really hit his guy right in the chest. So. And Luka does things like that all the time, so it's not as imp- this. <laughs> this, I've never really seen him kind of dime like this. This is another play. If I did this in a game, I'm throwing the ball. Kyle, you stance. have a lot of last minute things mm. where you're walking off. <laughs> OG and <Yeah>. Anobi. <laughs> Yeah, oh. These guys are fun. They these guys are perplexed. between him and Scotty Barnes. <laughs> they got they got a bunch of just link. Yeah, athletic. long. Entire team is six ten. That's right. <laughs> right. Mm. Yeah, Pascal's right. out right now, so OG, this is his time to shine. When exactly. you get like a full runway like that, you're what definitely that getting some power on it. Is that bags? Yeah. No, is it? Yeah, it's it the is. bag man. Oof. Bags. I just want to feel that once. Like, what's that like? What's that oh, like, Chandler? God. Honestly, it's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it's really fun. So jealous. Enjoy I'm not it. jealous of a lot. I am jealous of that. Enjoy it while it lasts, though, because that goes quick. That's a tough fall, too. It's worth it. Wait, do you, could one. you not dunk right now ever again? I mean, I could dunk, but it, it would not be impressive. <laughs> <laughs> it would be so weak. Still counts. And I would have to like cold tub for a solid 12. <laughs> like that right after. <laughs> Just from one little bunny dunk. Oh. Oh man, we have this. Is might be our first ever self own. Um, that Josh Giddy, you have a family, I guess is how we're See, gonna put it. You you can do that in like open runs Oops. at Lifetime Fitness or <laughs> LA, LA Fitness. Like like you can do that, but not in that oh. game. It's crazy too because he's a smart. Kind of under control, great passing. Well, yeah, just had a moment. He, just, he, he must have thought just for a split second he was at some gym. Yeah, <laughs> he, he fully so, blacked yeah. out there and just. just I feel like I would have argued like it never got in back. Oh, it hit the it hit the core. Uh, I mean, you sucks. can tell me his body language immediately is like. What? And it's a close game at this point. Yeah, too. This, this is tough. And Shay's you know, like, damn. Right. <laughs> That's like maybe one of the most embarrassing things you can do on the court. Like there's twenty thousand so. people watching you do this. What's like, more embarrassing, that or just walking the ball also, like John Wall? Oh, yeah, Russell, like, like Russ. That Russ. Also, where is he? Oh, he's they scored. He's picking it up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, like, I think this is worse, but he's literally the only one moving in the entire <laughs> building in that moment. So all eyes are on you. I'll, That's rough. I think it's rough. I don't like it. But you know what? He's redeemed himself. It's not like he does this all the time. Marcus no. Smart got a kick out of it. Yeah, Josh he really Giddy's did. Good. By He's the way, nice. every time they do Chandler's hobo. one shot in his little laptop situation, I die. I, this is you my like favorite. This? Yeah, it's look how silly. Oh, that's all I need. We need a close up. We need a close up. Just a I close hope you up never get a laptop. A man. Never. <laughs> I don't want you to have an iPhone stand. Like, it's just yeah. it's so fancy. When we're on right. Zoom, I expect to see that. It was well. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to do so it from good. this. <laughs> my favorite thing that we have going on right now. Uh, we have, we're take a break. Coming up, pinch nipples. Finally, a topic I can get behind. <laughs> that's all going to be next. I'm going to run it back. It's stupid. <laughs> I'm afraid to speak. I'm afraid to speak. <laughs> like, they take that one shot and you just see this. And you... <laughs> Early in the game, you really control the boards. Is, is that something that just comes naturally in a game like this? or? Yeah, I'm a big bastard, mate. You, oh. you assume so, eh? Yeah. I, you know, don't expect one of these little dudes to control the boards, eh? I love him. I just love him. I, I wish he did all the interviews for everybody all the time. And he is a big... Are we allowed to say that word? I mean, you cuss all the time. I don't know why I'm looking at you. I don't even know. Chandler's the only one with cursing. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm looking at a possible suspension. (laughs) He's the only one that's worked that out in his deal. That's fine. Um, Steven Adams is always uh, a gift at this point. But he also had a minute uh, earlier, was it this week? Yeah, that he claimed that the Spurs' Jeremy Sohan um, pinched his nipple. (laughs) in an attempt to break his concentration. He's taking Love the Dennis it. Rodman thing to heart. Right. I mean, right? Like, hey, that's that's kind of maybe going to be his thing. Does that happen, Chandler? Are we missing this? I mean, I don't know if I've ever got my <laughs> nipple pinched. Uh, little things like at the free throw line, some will untie your shoe. Or the oh, Lance what? Stevenson, like, blowing in your that's ear. Like, all-time like, classic. Yeah, like, silly things like that. But as far as the, the sexual assault on the, <laughs> on the court, I've never, I've never seen that. Really? I'm not touching this one, Michelle. So. Yeah. You don't have any insight Tom's, what do you on this? Think? <laughs> Can you confirm Michelle, it? What do you think? Yeah. <laughs> Guys, I think it's kind of hot. No, yeah. it's like, <laughs> no I, I now I kind of want to pay attention more. Right. I got to say, like, I would be, you'd probably get the rebound on me if you did that. <laughs> like, you'd probably, Throw you off a little bit? Yeah, I'd definitely throw like me damn. off. Yeah, I would not, <laughs> not be distracted. <laughs> I feel like Steven Adams, it's hard to throw him off anyway, so I kind of love it. Um, we're going to, Clay, he's, Clay Thompson's been doing interviews. He's been talking a lot more. He's obviously frustrated, um, telling the Bleacher Report, I feel like I deserve more credit for battling through all that injury shit. Yes, I got to do it. That was a quote. <laughs> Chandler. Are we being too critical? Listen, no one's saying he's done. No one's saying he's horrible. Mm. No one's, no one, he's not getting the Ben Simmons treatment right now. He's not. And what he, I think everyone respects what he 
has been through and what he's doing to still even be a contributing player in the NBA. But at a certain point, he's got to tune it out. He's got to stop listening. You're a, you're a Hall of Famer. You're a four-time champion. You have a clay day, for God's sakes. Like, how much <laughs> more credit do you need? Clay and day. now the first kind of negative publicity, negative tweets you get, this is how you react. Mm. I, I just, I think it's, I think, I'm a little disappointed in him because he should brush this off so quick. He should just be bigger than this, and he's he's commenting on it an, an awful lot. Well, yeah, it and seems most like it. guys get heckled. Most guys get a lot of trash talk to them. Most guys get ripped by the media and the fans, and that's part of it. And now this is the first time he's kind of getting that because he's had this beautifully perfect career yeah. till the injuries. And I don't, I just think he's handling it kind of the wrong way, and he's not used to. The, this being the norm that a lot of guys are like, West, like Westbrook and these guys these guys get yeah crushed all season long and it hurts and, and you take you see it everyone's on their phone everyone has Twitter everyone has Instagram you see all this stuff but for him to just keep acknowledging it to me is petty he's having hard, I mean look he's been loved the whole time I could see how it'd be difficult all of a sudden but then the first negative publicity you get you just, like unravel like it's like yeah. brush it off Th this also is like, I'm surprised he didn't talk to his dad like just get you know hey yeah. just chill yeah it's cool. this is a guy who like had an awful performance in the finals and it became a meme it was like, yo, he scored four points, Don't and he's call. cheesing on the bench. Who cares? So, like, yeah, this feels like his first real dose of yes. criticism. And is, are we overly critical? Not really. I he's not so. playing great. And but he's bringing light to it more than right, anything else. Like, you're not, you know you're not shooting and playing well, and you're getting mad at people that are saying that. Like, it's just, it's, it's, it's kind of crazy. Right. It's, there's not, they're not making it up, and, and that's probably why he's so frustrated. Uh, right. Expansion talk time. I never know how I feel about the possibility of adding teams to leagues, um, but Mexico City is reportedly a candidate to possibly get an NBA team. Um, of course, Seattle and Las Vegas are also in those talks. But as far as NBA expansion, do we love it, and do we like the idea of Mexico City? Uh, no. <laughs> and there it is. And we're done. <laughs> uh, love ex I'm a little iffy on expansion as well. Too. Like, I hate to di dilute the talent pool even more. We yep. have some pretty bad teams in this league. We have some pretty talent depleted teams in this league. And now we're going to add 25 more Oof. players to the to the docket, and we're going to take stars away. Like, it, it's a lot. Now, uh, maybe you move some teams. Or maybe I think Vegas and Seattle have been in line forever, and – Vegas has proven themselves as a sports city, and, and mm -hmm. as as gambling becomes less taboo and, and more acceptable, yeah, I think that's the great a great place to have a team, and and I'm sure the players would love it as I well. Mean. Uh, but yeah, to add another foreign country to the docket and and having your guys live out there for eight months at a time, like it's asking a lot when there's viable options here stateside. There's there's too much unknown. I think it's cool to to expand it globally, yeah. play preseason games there, do things like that, but if I'm a free agent, I'm not moving my kids to Mexico City to, to like a play for full time, full year round. There's too much. It's it's kind of dangerous. There's a lot of the team doctors there. Like it's just there's too many questions. I think it'd be cool to have different, you know, like I said, preseason games there, whatever. But to me, I think Vegas is is. I feel like Seattle dream. deserves it before I, Vegas does. I think sentimentally. I think Vegas and Seattle, are the two <clears throat> team, uh, two cities that the league would probably hone in on. But I, I don't think expansion is coming for several years Good. now. Um, you know, three, five, seven years down the line. I think once the once the NBA is through the CBA negotiations, the new TV deal, a couple of years maybe after that, and you're looking at 2026 ish. You know, when maybe they can they can get to something. I know the Spurs play in Mexico City this year, <clears throat> regular season game. I think I'm dying. I'm so sorry. But um, we do. We got a little who we got. I'm going to give you guys two options. Chandler, you're going to start. Okay. The, <laughs> I love that you get this first one. Better NBA city. Oof. Hmm. Salt Lake or Sacramento? Be nice, Chandler. Yeah, I mean, this is tough. Honestly, this is tough. I'd probably go with Sacramento just because the, mm. it's California. The, the weather's slightly better, I guess, in the winter. I guess. You can, you can order a <laughs> vodka soda double. Like, oh, that's fair. Bars, every, there's more nightlight. Things are open. There's a lot more to do. And Salt Lake is, is pretty miserably cold during the, <laughs> during the season. And I'm like, Where is it going with that one? I'm yeah, like, okay. that's not for me. God, I used to, that, Sacramento but, used to be my least favorite stop, but I feel like I'm coming around. Which is weird to say a lot. Yeah. out there. Yeah, it's, out there it's weird. And all they have is the Kings, too, and it's fun yeah. to play. That, like, yeah, so I would go with Sac. All right. See, it wasn't that bad. No. Eddie, bigger surprise, the Blazers or the Wizards? 
Well, since Dame was my dark horse MVP pick, it's, <laughs> I'm not surprised by their success. I'm going with the Wizards, though, uh, especially with them missing Dame as long as they have. They've just continued to grind it out, and, it, you know, they had a really disappointing season last year, and, and they've mm -hmm. dealt with trade rumors for the longest, and, and, and Brad played the, like the, you know, will I leave, will I won't game, uh, but, but they've been fun, they've been exciting out there, uh, so I'm, I'm going to go with them. I like what they're doing. <laughs> okay, all right. Better MVP, speaking of, long shot, Dame or Zion? Oh, I'm going with, with Eddie's Dame. I think, you know, people expected the Pelicans to be a good team this year and Zion to come back and, and, and have a great year, but he's he's going to miss time. And, and Dame, with that roster, that team, this is one of the teams that I thought were going to tank and, and we're going to kind of be in those, you know, women Yama sweepstakes. <laughs> Dame's killing. He's averaging 28, 7, and 5, and, and he's he's getting everybody involved. He's I think they're first in the Western Conference right mm -hmm. now. Like, to me, he, he is top five in, in MVP voting, and, and Zion's not. It's an interesting culture change that Chauncey's doing up there, and, and quick, which I think is fun to watch. Eddie, bigger disappointment, <laughs> the Nets or the Lakers? Oh, God. Uh, since this the Lakers one's... have the worst record, Ugh. I'm going to go with them, even though they just beat the Nets. Well, I think the expectations were higher for them, at least for, for the me. Lakers. Yeah, I, really? I think you know people really bought into those signings, whether they want to admit it now or not. People were excited about Lonnie Walker. People were excited about Russ potentially off the bench. People were excited about what they thought they had. That can't. Be I right. viewed the Nets as a combustible situation all season long, and it's not even like the insider or anything because we knew everything that was going on. We knew everything that could go wrong. And now it's going wrong. And, hmm. you know, you're talking about a team that had a coach that people wanted fired the moment he got hired. You're talking about a superstar who asked out, another one that was on the way out the door and the team wouldn't commit too long term. And then the unknown of Ben Simmons and, you know, their oh, big offseason pickups were T.J. Warren, who hasn't played in, t in two years, Edmund Sumner, who just missed a season as well. And it's like, yeah, there's a lot to worry about here, at least from my perspective. <laughs> See, that was very diplomatically handled. I'm <laughs> proud of you on that one. Chandler, bigger home court advantage, the Celtics or the Raptors? Uh, I think Celtics. Celtics, to me, is one of the, is the hardest place to play. I think hmm. with that. The, Those fans get Oh, the passion. I was there at the finals. Oh, my God. The, the history. For the first time, I, that's when I covered games. The, the noise. Boston, Those wow. fans, too, they cut deep. They'll say some <laughs> crazy things to you. That's, um, that sounds about right. And just the noise. It's, that place shakes when it's rocking. Yeah. Yeah, I thought uh, you didn't Toronto hear that. gets like, lively too, though. Toronto gets lively. Honestly, Portland. Toronto's fun. And OKC when they OKC's were popping back in the too. day, was, they don't sit down. They keep twirling the towel. They are <laughs> they're like college fans. They are nuts. But Boston, to me, they're always good, and the, and the crowd is even better. I think the insulting in Massachusetts as a whole is better. I went to game one. Like, it's, it's I went tough. to game one last year, and it's the first time in that arena. And the way it's just set up, yeah, it's just like almost level. And they just don't stop. You and hear it does it all. shake. I I was blown away. Yeah, like the arena was moving physically. Shake. I don't like that. No, it's tough. No, I'm hating that. As a I swear. Person. I think Michelle did not see sick. Arena. It, safe. it <laughs> rattles the refs. It's so loud. Yeah, that's like, that might be yeah. too much. Um, Eddie, if you could pick only one of us to team up with for the amazing race, who would it be, and uh, then why? Do the right, right thing here. I'm canceling Chandler again yes. for the that's same reason. Right. He's All right, just, out again. <laughs> he's just peppering. <laughs> like, I, I think I know where this one's going. Because I'm on load management. Wait, you know, why is he out? That's interesting. <laughs> Look, he's just, you know, he's a man of means. He's not used to having oh, right. okay. you know, scrums. He's fancy. And, yeah. and, you know, he's, he's, he's bougie. I'm going with Shams. OD oh. resourceful. Oh, we know he's sexist. This yeah. is yeah. becoming I don't, a problem. I, don't, I think you got to, you know, I'm bound now. He doesn't, Shams never even wants to do these things. Shams is to go buy out. like, pick me. Everybody out there. In Hollywood. I would have been like, no, you know what? You're right. No, nah, he's just yeah. like really resourceful. He can make it work in any room. Like, look at the things he's uncovered in this I'm world. I'm going to call someone to help, actually. With right, this yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Shams is actually like really young. And he's like, yeah, I, I need Jesus. that. I need that oh, youthful He needs a youthful experience. He just, he just called you old. A hundred percent he just did. <laughs> I call myself old. We have how many much time in the show? <laughs> Eleven more minutes you of this think garbage. You know a guy. <laughs> you think you know a guy. You know what? I hope you do get on any of these shows. And I hope you right. fail miserably. You know, if we do I'm the challenge, you the whole time. if we do the challenge, I got you. I'll eat you know, just you, bugs and stuff. Like, I just do it. Go. This spot is yours. I'm bottom out. <laughs> Me and yeah. Chandler are already out. Once again, by default, I'm like, okay, yeah. this is embarrassing. All right, fine. Let's do a little convince me, shall we? <laughs> Chandler, convince me, uh, this one, I, every year, NBA regular season should be shortened to 58 games. 
Yeah, I kind of like this. Honestly, I think it would load management wouldn't exist. Um, all the start, every game would matter, right? So, like, Gosh. if you go on a five-game losing streak with a 58-game season, your season could be in jeopardy. Um, stars would play. They would. I, I, as kids, imagine if you're in Sacramento and Philly's coming there, and Joel Embiid, the one time he comes, doesn't play. That yep. wouldn't happen in a shorter season. So, I think it's great for the game. I think it's great for the players, and I think it's really great for the fans. Although, I wonder how long it would take before they. Scientifically, we're like, well, we still have to do a little bit of load management. Yeah, then we would just play 45 games. <laughs> yeah, keep lowering it down. Yeah. Just make it a seven-game series. We'll call it a night. Uh, yeah. Eddie, they should bring back breakable glass backboards. Yeah, I just think these ones are breakable. I'm, I'm leaving it up to the guys we okay. have now to wow. challenge them. Zion, you can break one of these. No I want to see it. No I want to see it. If anybody can, it's going to be him. I want to see you do it, Zion. Like, make you it no way? No, I think the rim can, like, get, you know, uh, they, they, the the form, breakaway rim. Yeah, yeah. I think I think you can mess up the rim itself and the, and the foundation. But I don't think you can't break the glass. I don't. Break the glass. So. I don't now I want I don't that to happen. They don't let guys hang on the rim anymore, which is not fun. Yeah, I think okay. it's like again weak. If I was to if I dunked <laughs> on Chandler, I need to hang on the rim for a little bit and tell <laughs> Chandler wow. I did that. Yeah, yeah. For sure. I love Eddie's all of his if eyes. <laughs> Got yeah. so many going at all times. They're never <laughs> happening, but like yo, <laughs> I'm hanging on the rim like Ray Allen. We, exactly. We're civilians. We should we're allowed that. Chandler, a guy can dream. Um, interesting. Each team should be allowed one flagrant foul per game. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is crazy. This would honestly pipe down the old heads that think the new guys are soft. And, you know, this is what made I the bad it. boys, the Pistons, fun, right? It would make it like everyone. I watch hockey to see the fights. So if you give NBA, <laughs> if you give NBA teams one just hard foul, maybe it would spice up the, the, the action. One There'd be flagrant. fights. There would... Uh, it would be extremely dangerous, and guys would end up missing the games like we just talked True. about. True. Uh, would you have, like, a goon on each squad that yeah, was like, that's your one job? Yeah, you're just... Like, that's running, the guy. You're, you're, you're assigning one huh. inmate per <laughs> each team. Does the Jeremy <laughs> Sohan situation count as a flagrant? Or like a nipple pinch? Yeah. No. <laughs> that's, like the yeah. that's foreplay. Get with yeah. me, What is wrong with yeah, you? I don't even think that's a foul. <laughs> I don't think it's a foul at all. You're <laughs> yeah. just being weak. Uh, Eddie convinced me the NBA should reset every year so teams draft from... All players based on the previous year's finish. Um, so first pick, you know, could be Giannis. I'm going to make it crazier. Just randomize it. Just like on Where 2K, just randomize it? the <laughs> rosters. Let's just send everybody everywhere. Every I, year. I think this would be amazing. We love player movement in the I NBA. Mean, so, like, let's so really get player movement sucks going. Sucks for them and have to move. You have no <laughs> idea where you're going at any given moment. But Yo, for us, they're yes. They're rich. They're, they're, they're fine. God, that's it's the cool. best answer I've ever heard. Yeah, Chandler. I still can't believe they're he called rich. you old. Oh, don't worry. We're going to talk about it. I, we got, I got eight more minutes of being nice on television. Uh, we're breaking down tonight's biggest <laughs> matchups when Run It Back returns. I'm trying to age backwards. Okay? I had to deflect. I deflected. <laughs> Beam is back. Beam team. Chandler served me. I'm so good. <laughs> I know. I know. I know. You know what? We're in Los Angeles, so we're throwing around show ideas, as people yeah. do, but we're not going to share any of them because they're all winners. Uh, guys, <laughs> L.A., we've been here a few days. We've hung out. Takes? I've enjoyed L.A. I've enjoyed the studio more than anything, though. I've, I've enjoyed the time getting to spend with you guys. It's been fun. Can we get you to move out west? or? Um, very unlikely. Oh, God, it's the worst. <laughs> Sources say. Sources yeah. say no. You guys, this has been good. It's been great. Yeah. Um, you know, Chandler's... Uh, liquor tolerance is exactly what I said. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, he's the exact guy I thought he was. Yeah, like, exactly. You know, I, I see like you have Eddie a drink, but do you want some ago. wine? Like, yeah, I mean, oh, I guess. have you had this tequila? Yeah. <laughs> wow. He said, I see you have this tequila. <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's a, a classic. That's a classic. Somehow I ended up taking it, too. Yeah. Just like, yeah, I'm I'm a terrible person as well. Yeah. yeah. No, it's just fun. You I love are. I love having you guys. This is your all, backyard. All You're the one who has to wake up at yeah, 6:30 no, to get ready. The timing is tough. 6:30. I had to wake up at five to get five. Up, drive from Malibu. Oh, the life from Malibu. It's exhausting. Your life is awful. The driver didn't bring you. It was, he wasn't. No. Jeeves wasn't available took this a morning. Helicopter. Oh, It'll be brutal. Uh, we are running back. We are on Mondays through Wednesdays, 10 Eastern in the morning. Yeah, that's right. And uh, we'll see you guys next week. Have a good one.